Hello, my dear students, and welcome to this English class. This is Listening 5B, Students Book, page 77. During this lesson, we will cover the following objectives. Number one, identify the points referred to in the interview. Number two, complete the interviewer's notes with the correct words or phrases. Number three, determine the uses of given phrases. Pre-listening activities have various purposes, including activating vocabulary, predicting content, and checking understanding of task. In this first activity, we will match the words in column A with their meanings in column B. The words are portfolio, keep up with, get on with, convince, ambitious. Please read through the meanings A to E, then have a minute to do the task. Now let's correct. Number one, portfolio. This word refers to the collection of work samples that provides evidence and quality of the work you've done. So, portfolio means C, very good, a document that demonstrates your skills and abilities, such as a cover letter or resume. Number two, keep up with. To keep up with developments means to continue to be informed about the changes in these developments. So it means to be able to cope with the new changes. It is D, good. Next, get on with. To get on with someone is the same as to get along with someone. It means to have a harmonious or friendly relationship with somebody, good. Number four, convince. It is to cause someone to agree to do something. It is to persuade someone to do something. Perfect. The last word, ambitious. It is having the desire to achieve a particular goal. It means determined to be successful. Excellent. Moving on to our first listening activity, we will listen to a man being interviewed for a job. I would like you to identify which of the points below does he refer to. Please stop the video and read through the points 1 to 10. Now let's listen carefully to the audio. Come in. Please have a seat. Thank you. So you are Harrington, John Harrington. Welcome, Mr. Harrington. I'm Andy Jameson. I see you're here today for the position of art director in our advertising department. Please begin by telling me a few things about yourself. Well, to begin with, I have a great deal of experience in the field. As you can see from my CV, since graduating from university, I have worked for a number of small advertising companies and you will find examples of the work I did for them in my portfolio. I'm good at keeping up with new developments, and I regularly attend events to broaden my skills and keep them up to date. In fact, just last week, I was at a major advertising exhibition in San Francisco. You can see a full list of everything I've attended on my CV. Yes, I also see from your CV that you were at your last company for only four months. Why did you decide to leave after such a short time? That's a good question. Let's just say there were a few disagreements. I didn't get on well with some of my colleagues. Would you say you have trouble working in a team then? No, not really. I work well alone, but at the same time, I appreciate other colleagues' opinions and welcome suggestions. Working in a team wouldn't be a problem for me. 
What would you say is your biggest weakness, Mr. Harrington? Hmm, let me think. Well, I've had difficulties explaining my ideas in the past. I used to think that if something was good in my mind, then that was good enough. I've been working on improving my ability to sell ideas and convince others that they work. I know it's not enough to just expect them to trust you. So, why do you want to work for us, Mr. Harrington? Why do I want to work for you? Well, firstly, I'm very ambitious. I like to make progress and challenge myself, and I've always been interested in working for a company like this one. You're serious, professional, and have a great team. I wanted to work myself up through smaller companies and smaller projects to give me space to grow professionally, and I believe that I am now in a position to bring all this experience and skill to your company. I believe I have creative ideas, and I'm ready to put all my energy into this job. Right, I think what I've heard is enough. Great. By the way, I've arranged to be on holiday next week, but I'll be free to start any time after that. I see. Well, thank you for coming in, Mr. Harrington. We'll be in touch to let you know what we've decided. Goodbye. As you've listened, Mr. John Harrington referred to some of the points listed below. What are they? Let's identify them together. When being interviewed, Mr. John said that he had few disagreements with some of his colleagues. So it is obvious that John pointed out the reason he left his last job. It is number one, good. During the interview, John claimed he worked for a number of advertising companies. So he explicitly referred to his previous work experience. Excellent. Also, John replied to the interviewer by saying that cooperation with others wouldn't be a problem for him. He meant whether he works well in a team. Good. Moreover, John claimed that in the past he had difficulties to explain his ideas. Here, he explicitly cited his weaknesses. Excellent. In addition, John cited his qualities and his interests in working in such a company. He pointed out the reason he wants to work for this company. Good. Added to the previous points, John mentioned that he attended an advertising exhibition in San Francisco. Here, he made a reference to the last work-related event he attended. Finally, John didn't forget to mention when he will be ready to join the company in case he is hired. He referred to when he is available to start working with this company. Good. In the second activity, we will listen again to the audio and complete the interviewer's notes with a word or short phrase. Please stop the video and read through the notes. Now let's listen again to the audio. Come in. Please have a seat. Thank you. So you are... Harrington. John Harrington. Welcome, Mr. Harrington. I'm Andy Jameson. I see you're here today for the position of art director in our advertising department. Please begin by telling me a few things about yourself. Well, to begin with, I have a great deal of experience in the field. As you can see from my CV, since graduating from university, I have worked for a number of small advertising companies, and you will find examples of the work I did for them in my portfolio. I'm good at keeping up with new developments, and I regularly attend events to broaden my skills and keep them up to date. In fact, just last week I was at a major advertising exhibition in San Francisco. You can see a full list of everything I've attended on my CV. Yes, I also see from your CV that you were at your last company for only four months. Why did you decide to leave after such a short time? That's a good question. Let's just say... There were a few disagreements. I didn't get on well with some of my colleagues. 
Would you say you have trouble working in a team then? No, not really. I work well alone, but at the same time, I appreciate other colleagues' opinions and welcome suggestions. Working in a team wouldn't be a problem for me. What would you say is your biggest weakness, Mr. Harrington? Hmm, let me think. Well, I've had difficulties explaining my ideas in the past. I used to think that if something was good in my mind, then that was good enough. I've been working on improving my ability to sell ideas and convince others that they work. I know it's not enough to just expect them to trust you. So, why do you want to work for us, Mr. Harrington? Why do I want to work for you? Well, firstly, I'm very ambitious. I like to make progress and challenge myself, and I've always been interested in working for a company like this one. You're serious, professional, and have a great team. I wanted to work myself up through smaller companies and smaller projects to give me space to grow professionally, and I believe that I am now in a position to bring all this experience and skill to your company. I believe I have creative ideas, and I'm ready to put all my energy into this job. Right, I think what I've heard is enough. Great. By the way, I've arranged to be on holiday next week, but I'll be free to start any time after that. I see. Well, thank you for coming in, Mr. Harrington. We'll be in touch to let you know what we've decided. Goodbye. Now let's correct. According to the audio, John Harrington had a great experience in the field of advertising. That's why he applied for the position of Art Director and Advertising Department. John has worked in companies which are specialized in making products or services known in public in order to buy them. So he gained experience working in small advertising companies. Moreover, he attended many events to develop his skills and keep them up to date, which means in accordance to the current changes. Unfortunately, John didn't get well with his workmates, so he has a history of disagreements with colleagues. Despite the fact that John is a skilled person, he had difficulty explaining ideas, which is his greatest weakness. John is very ambitious. He likes to make progress and wants to challenge himself by working in this advertising company. Finally, John has arranged to be on a holiday, so he can't start work for another week. Suppose your teacher asks you a trick question. What goes up and never ever goes down? Well, if you don't know the answer, you will start to mumble saying, um, er, uh, these are called fillers. We use them when we don't know the answer and we only want to fill the silence. In this interview, John Harrington used phrases like these fillers, like, that's a good question. Mm, let me think. Well, why do I want to work for you? Well, firstly, why do you think John begins his answers this way? Please take a moment to think about this question. Although the phrases John Harrington uses are like fillers, they do not give the impression that John doesn't know what to say. They give the impression that he is listening to the interviewer and that he is simply organizing his thoughts before answering. By the way, the answer to the trick question is the age. The purpose of a job interview is to determine if the applicant is qualified for the position for which he or she is applying, and if this individual would be a good fit for the company. Do you think John Harrington 
would be a good fit for the advertising company? Do you think he will get the job? Why and why not? Please stop the video and think about this question. While the opinions may vary from one student to another, let's have a look at what student A has written. I think John Harrington will be hired. He is experienced in the field of advertising and he is trying hard to keep his skills up to date. He is really interested in getting a job in such a company. It is true that he had some disagreements with his colleagues, but that doesn't mean that he lacks the ability to work well in a team. Another student expressed a different opinion. He or she refused the idea that John Harrington would get the job because of his weakness. John can't express his ideas. As the position of art director requires expressing and sending ideas, and since John has difficulty doing that, I believe he is not the suitable person for such a position. Moreover, this job requires teamwork and cooperation, but John may not be able to cope with that. He left his previous job because he didn't get on well with his colleagues. That could be another disadvantage for this position. Do you think John Harrington answered any of the questions badly or mentioned anything that gave a bad impression? If so, what? Please stop the video and answer this question. Being truthful or sincere in a job interview is a quality that is highly considered. I believe John was so. But sometimes truth hurts. I disagree with John in two occasions. First, he could have mentioned that he left his previous job because of the working environment instead of saying due to his disagreements with his workmates. Second, I think that any job candidate who is interested in getting a job should show that he or she is available whenever needed. John could have waited to see if he would be hired and then tell the interviewer when he would be available. My dear students, that is the end of our lesson. By now, I expect you to be able to identify the points referred to in the interview, complete the interviewer's notes with the correct words or phrases, and determine the uses of given phrases. This video will always be available on Microsoft Teams for you to watch at any time. Thanks for watching.